Hi everyone. It is such a pleasure for Susie and me to welcome you to our 2021 Hay Living Museum. We have always loved this project and we do wish that we could have hosted you in person at the JCC Teichman Gallery. Since that is not possible at this time, our exhibit this year is digital. This will enable even more visitors to attend and will enable anyone who wishes to view it over and over again. Our Hay students have been very serious in choosing and learning about their artifacts. The stories behind them are interesting, heartwarming, and inspirational. We are so proud of our students. We hope that you will continue sharing family stories and memories with each other, while at the same time creating your own family stories and memories, which will be passed along through the generations. We are delighted to present our 2021 Hay Living Museum. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Noah, and I'm going to be sharing an artifact with you today, my Kiddush bag, the, my dad's Kiddush bag. The Kiddush is an important Jewish ritual. We say the Kiddush over a glass of wine or grape juice. We say the Kiddush to declare that Shabbat or the holiday that we are celebrating is holy. We also drink out of a Kiddush cup when we are saying the Kiddush. The artifact that I will be telling you about is my dad's Kiddush cup. My dad got this Kiddush cup at his bar mitzvah at Adath on October 27, 1990. This Kiddush cup is from Israel. It is silver and plated with 24 karat gold. My parents were married in Omaha on July 6, 2003. They use this Kiddush cup at the chuppah at their wedding. I will use this Kiddush cup at my bar mitzvah. And my sister will use it at her bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah. We plan to pass it down through the family for many years to come. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Izzy and this is my living artifact. My great-grandpa, Jacob Sherling, bought this about 75 years ago, and my grandpa, Harold, has used it every Hanukkah since. It has the Star of David under the Shamash, and one very special thing about this artifact is that it has a music box on the bottom. Unfortunately, the music box isn't working right now, but I can still show you how it works. You would just wind this, twist the handle thing, and it would play a song. Unfortunately, it's not working, so I don't know what song it plays, but hopefully we can get that repaired soon. And all, another cool thing about this artifact is that one of the legs happened to fall off, so you can see that my great-grandpa was creative enough to repair it with a wooden peg. That's my living artifact. My name is Jacob, and today I'm going to share with you this very special family artifact that I have, a Torah scroll. In former Czechoslovakia, currently called Slovakia, from a town called Leshevitz, this artifact was found during World War II on the street by a Christian woman after the synagogue was ransacked. She knew it was important to the Jews and saved it and gave it to my great-grandmother after the war. Before the war, my great-great-grandfather held the Torah that now I have a portion of. I know I am blessed to have something so special in my house, and I'm happy to share it all with you. And here is an amazing close-up of this artifact. This is something that's very special to us, and we thank the person who saved us. Hello, my name is Lydia, and I would like to share with you this artifact, this Hanukkah. This Hanukkah has been in my family for over a hundred years. This is my great, 
great-grandmother Zisa. Zisa got this in Saxony, Germany, and met Yahtzee Kirstein and got married at 14 years old. They had five daughters and two sons. Their oldest son, my great-grandfather Jules Hirschstein, married Florence Krasner Hirschstein, and they had four children. The oldest son, my Zadie Mordechai Hirschstein, married Diti and had two daughters. My, my mom, Joey, and my auntie, Allie. This was a really fun lighting this with my Zadie. And now I would light this Hanukkah in honor of my Zisa. Thank you. My name is Sasha. This is my great grandfather's tefillin. He purchased it in Israel in the 1950s. His name? His name was Martin, but his Hebrew name was Matit Yahu. Then I, in at my birth, was given a he his Hebrew name in remembrance of him. He then gave it to my grandfather for his bar mitzvah, who, after his bar mitzvah and he had kids, gave it to his daughter, who, after her bar mitzvah, gave it to his son. His son had his bar mitzvah and then gave it to his daughter, sister. my sister, who had her bar mitzvah one year ago. It is important because it is important in Jewish culture because her because using a tefillin makes you feel closer to God. Also, it is a mitzvah to use tefillin during prayer. My artifact is the Life Magazine. And the story behind this Life Magazine is one morning, this Life Magazine was on my great grandma's table and she read it while she was having breakfast that morning and she was flipping page by page through the magazine and came to one of the pages and looked at one of the pictures in that page and said, that's my dad. So right here is my great grandma's dad, which would make him as a little boy, um, but he was my great, great grandpa. And the headline of this was how we came to America. Um, and so I also have this other piece of paper and it's really hard to read, but it basically has everybody in my family's name on it. Everybody in my family's name on it that came through Ellis Island and came to America through El Ellis Island and where they were going and how this relates to Judaism is many Jewish, uh, Jewish people come from Russia. I was informed by my parents and most of my family is from Russia and it's just a big thing in my family. 
Hi, I'm Annabelle Orsipora, and my artifact is a smasa cover made around 100 years ago in Romania by my great, 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 great aunt. Women in those days show their handiwork through things like this, and it was very important that they knew how to do this. It has been passed down from generation to generation until it ended up with my great aunt, who spends every second Seder with us. It's on our, mop, it's on our table every year to this day. It has lots of good stories too, like the wine stain on there. My grandpa spilled wild wine on there when he was a kid. That just proves how old this thing is. Even when you look at the back of it, see that? That's old. So, that's all I have. Hi, my name is Reese, and these are my artifacts I brought, and they were both in honor of my great-grandparents' anniversary. The gimel on the smaller cup was from my great-grandparents, Lee and Maurice Gordon, and the bigger one with the shin on it was from my great-grandparents, Gigi, which I call her, but her real name was Rose, and Jack Stoller. These were gifted to them for their 50th wedding anniversary from Bethel Synagogue. I got to know my great grandma Gigi really well, and I remember seeing her on, Shab on Shabbat sometimes. And we used these Shabbat Kiddush cups on most Fridays with my family. I look forward to getting a Kiddush cup for my bar mitzvah. Hi, I'm Mari, and now I'm going to be talking about my grandfather's, maternal grandfather's tefillin. So, which is kind of, something that's kind of funny about it, is this is a tallest bag, but it says that in Hebrew, I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. And then once you open it, but it's actually tefillin, but once you open it, it's sort of like a really long black strip um, and there's two boxes that is in this. And if you look, so there's two of these. In each one, there's prayers. So if you see in these, I don't know open up prayers, but there's two, if there's prayers in here. And this one. So this is probably 150 or 40 years old. That is very, very, very very old and so his maternal grandfather went started in russia went to europe and then went to the usa and that took him seven years 1914 through 1921 and it's kind of funny because he of course only bring the stuff that was really important to him or import, like important or needed things. And this was one of his things with them. Hello, my name is Noah. My artifact is my dad's tali. It was handmade in the 1950s by my great grandma, my great grandpa, as a gift. How my dad got the tali was around a year after my great grandpa's funeral when my dad was 30. Him and his three brothers got to pick a piece of paper from a bag, not looking in the bag, that had the description of one of my great grandma's four talits. And my dad got the description of the colorful talit. That was my dad's favorite talit out of the four. Now, whenever my dad wears the talit, it reminds him of his grandparents. I chose this item because because it is unique and you can't find it if you just walk into a random Talit store. My name is Ava and this is my grandpa's creation painting. He painted about 30 years ago. Um, um, one of his hobbies is painting. This is um, this 
in the story of creation, which is the in the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Torah. Hello, my name is Sydney. For my present for my presentation, I am presenting this prayer book. This prayer book has gone back in our family on my dad's side for a long time. It's at least 150 years old and it's very fragile. As you can see, the pages have turned yellow. My great great grandfather's name was Eliyahu. He was from Aleppo, Syria, and was a very well known Sephardic rabbi there. He came to the United States in 1927 and moved to Brooklyn, New York. He had a big family with nine children and he was very religious. And Judaism was very, Judaism was very important to him. His family was not forced to move from Aleppo to the United States. Life was very different there. They got around on camel and had no electricity. We don't know a lot about this prayer book, but it's been in our family for over a hundred for over a hundred years. It's cool to think about how far this book has traveled and what my family's life in Syria was like. Hi, I'm Mia, and this is an art piece given to my great grandparents for their fiftieth anniversary. There are many Jewish symbols surrounding the piece, including menorahs, toros, and ma toros, and many candlesticks for Shabbat. At the bottom is a Shehechianu prayer, which is said on joyous occasions. My great-grandparents got married on November 20th, 1943, and since then has been a very special day for my family. My grandma had her bat mitzvah on November 20th, 1966, and she was the first girl to have her bat mitzvah at Temple Israel. My mom had her bat mitzvah on November 20th, 1993, and that's when this was gifted to them on the bima. I was lucky to spend time with both of my great-grandparents, but unfortunately both died. My great-grandpa passed a few days away of what would have been their 77th anniversary, and we use this piece to remember them. Hi, my name is Jonah, and for my Living Museum project, I have a Seder plate for my great-grandmother, Esther Sherman. This is my great-grandmother. She lived in Bethesda, Maryland, and she died in December 2020 at 95 years old. This Seder plate was used at Seders that she hosted for her children and eventually grandchildren, and now we use it today. This Seder plate is 60 years old. Adapted by Lennox from a 19th century plate in the collection of the Jewish Museum, New York. A Seder plate is used on Passover, an important Jewish holiday in the spring. We put various things on these Seder plates that symbolize the story of Exodus from Egypt, from, from how we became slaves to free, and families tell this story every year on Passover. Thank you. Hello, my name is Isaac and I will be presenting these coins as my contribution to the Living Museum project. These coins were given to my father by my mother for their first anniversary. They were minted by Jews in Judea in the, um, in the second year of the first Jewish revolt in the year 67 or 68 Common Era. On one side is a two-handed amphora um, that um, that says year two. On the other part, um, on the other side, it's um, it says Freedom of Zion, and it shows a grapevine. The, these coins are a significance to my Jewish heritage because. Um, they show our ancient connection to the land of Israel, um, and how we were even suffer that we were even struggling to be free people in our own land way back then, like two thousand years ago. My name is Jesse, and this is my great grandfather's tefillin, and it was handmade in the nineteen hundreds. This is special to me. 
because my great-grandfather used it when he was practicing for his bar mitzvah. And my father also used it when he was practicing for his bar mitzvah. This is used for praying and remembering um, how God freed the Jewish children from ancient Egypt. How you use it is you take off this green cap and then there's a black box and inside of the black box is a piece of the Torah and you wrap it around your head and then with the other one you wrap it around your arm and yeah. And that is my great grandfather's death that way. Hi, this is my mom's Kiddush cup she got at her bat mitzvah. Ever since she got her bat mitzvah, our family has stu studied and observed Judaism. We use um, this um, Kiddush cup in um, two breasts, many Passovers, and many Purims. Also, sometimes Shabbat. The Jewish people use these in special occasion use this in a special in special occasions too, like um, life cycle events and so also they pass it down by generation to generation. And I hope my family can do that too. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Lauren, and my artifact is the Union Prayer Book. This Union Prayer Book has been in my family for over a hundred years. It's like a family diary of important dates. This prayer book started with my great-great-grandmother and then passed down to my great-grandmother or my mom's grandmother. In this prayer book, my, my grandmothers kept track of the dates then fit when family members were born and then passed away. So as they honored those who had passed, passed at their yard sites, they would read the prayers from this book and had their names close. The one really cool thing about my grandmothers who own this prayer book is that my great-great-grandmother, Anna Goldman, was born in Wisconsin, and my great-grandmother, Ethel Goldman, was born, in, was born right here in Minneapolis, but she moved to California as a very young child. So when my brother and I were born in Minneapolis, it was a really full circle family moment for my mom's side of the family. The Union Prayer Book was especially published for Reform Jews to have their own Jewish prayer book, and we have had it in our family for over a hundred years. Thank you. My name is Rebecca, and this is a Kiddush cup. That was my great great grandpa's who bought it in Chicago in 1952. The reason we don't have something farther back is because there was a fire and this kiddish cup is a replacement for an older one. This has been used for many Shabbats. Many, many Shabbats, even though it is just a replacement. Here's a funny story that, about it when, that my um, Zadie told me. So, when Zadie was a kid, he was using he was using it and didn't put this shot glass inside. He didn't put the shot glass inside and it got his dad really mad and he told him to never do that ever again because the glass protects this kiddish cup when you drink from it. I thought that story was funny but that's all the information I really have about this Kiddush Cup. So, bye. My name is Harlow. This is a program from my baby name in Hebrew. It is called Simpa Bop. And this is my baby book with pictures from my baby name. Here are the pictures from and 
the synagogue with my family. The baby name mean is important for truth because it is when a daughter becomes part of a covenant with God. My name and I was my naming I was given the Hebrew name Haya because I was the eighth person eighteenth person born in the fourth generation after the Holocaust in my Bubby Bubby's family. Hebrew means life, so it is important now, but so I was named high in memory of my relatives killed during the Holocaust and in honor of the survivors' strength, courage, and commitment to Judaism. My name is Jonah, and this is my grandfather, Shofar. He played this Shofar when he was a kid around my age, especially on Rosh Hashanah. And he also played this when he was coming home from college on breaks. He, his synagogue that he went to was Adas Israel. The origin of the Shofar is unknown but is believed to be purchased in the Louvre. It's at least 90 years old. The shofar is blown on Rosh Hashanah and at every weekday morning, service during the month of Elul until Rosh Hashanah, and then on Yom Kippur until the end of Nila service. And the sound of the shofar is a call to look into our hearts, think of how we can be better in the coming year. And that's the story of my grandfather so far and how it has been passed down from generation to generation. And now I will try to play it. I'm Andrew and this is my artifact. Some of my family immigrated from Poland and some came from Lithuania, as you can see right here. My grandpa's dad's name was Jacob, and his parents were Sophie and Yeheskal, and their parents were Chaim and Toba. Chaim and Toba are my great-great-grandparents. And so, there, this is their family. There was six kids, and there was a set of twin sisters, and this is the family picture. And then this is another picture of them with with the whole entire family, the whole extended family. And so some of them had to change their names because they didn't know them. Um, no, like when they got there, they couldn't understand what they're saying. So they just changed their names. So yeah, and here's the ship, some of the people on the ship. And some of them got split up, so they had to take different ships. Here and here is one of the other ships that they had to take. And then one of their names got changed. The so, so somebody named somebody named Shifra. This is her. She was my great great grandparents. She, or my great great grandma. She had to change her name to Sophie because they didn't understand what she was saying. And Sophie, she she died in 1959, and this is her grave. And this relates to this relates to my Jewish heritage because they were my old 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 relatives that kind of started the Sherling family up. So yeah. This medusa was purchased by my grandmother and grandfather when they were visiting Jerusalem and passed along to my father. The stones decorating the mezuzah are from Jerusalem, Israel. The mezuzah is a piece of parchment called a cloth. Inside a decorative case and inscribed with passages from the Torah, including the Shema Israel. 
Jews are commanded to put a mezuzah on the doorpost of their house and at the doorpost of every room, except the bathroom. And that's what it looks like. Hi, my name is Mava Sachs, and this is my artifact, a Western Wall, um, a Western Wall pendant. It is from Israel, and it is around 35 years old. My great grandma Riva Winthrop brought it back from Israel when she was on a tr her first and only trip with s some Minneapolis senior citizens to Israel. Um, the pendant um, has hi, which means life in Hebrew, and on the front, embedded in the Western Wall. And um, on the back, it, um, in Hebrew, um, translation, it means, um, if I forget the Odrush, if I forget the O Jerusalem, I shall um, lose function in my right, right, right hand. Um, my great grandma bought four pendants: one for my mom, and then her three other granddaughters. Um, I hope one day that I, it will be passed down to me. Um, hello, my name is Dolly Ackerman, and my artifacts are two wooden camels from Israel that my mom got when she was 10 from visiting relatives, since both of my grandparents on my mom's side are Israeli, so yeah. They are made from olive wood, and since camels are, and camels are also my mom's favorite animal, and they have a little red saddle on each of them with purple purple slash blue and yellow highlights I guess or indents with also I guess a little chain they are made from olive wood um so yeah Hi, my name is Micah, and I'm going to tell you a story about this salute. It is from Israel, and it was given to my dad by Bernie Horowitz, who is the owner of Bernie's Delicatessen. But it's not open anymore. It was sadly closed. But Bernie was really close to my dad, and my dad knew him because he lived across the street from him. And Bernie was really like my dad Saba because well in Boston that's where my Saba my Saba lived and he didn't really have a very close connection with like his dad so they weren't really in touch because when my Saba moved to Minnesota from Boston to go to college they didn't really keep in touch very much so when my Saba had my dad they my dad didn't really get to see him. That's why Bernie was really his Saba. And that's why when Bernie was going to my dad's bar mitzvah, he gave him this tallit. And now it's going to be passed down to me from my dad. Hi, I'm Eliana, and this is my grandpa's family tree. It was made 57 years ago in 1964. The oldest relative on here is from 1840, and he's still adding names. Um, adding names. <laughs> Sorry, um, the Jewish connection to this is Le Medora Lador, from generation to generation. It, it is a very important concept in Judaism. This, con this tree shows our, our connection to past generations. Hi, I'm Noah. This is my great grandpa Bill Cedar. It's been in my family for over 80 years, and I'm going to show you some of it. And it's been in my family for generations from my great grandpa to my grandpa to now me and my brother. It's very important in Judaism because people study prayers a lot, and it's very important that my family has had this prayer book for a very long time. 
it's cool because my great grandpa got it on his bar mitzvah over 80 years ago and he handed it to my grandpa I think on his bar mitzvah and my brother got it a couple of years ago and now I have it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brooke, and my artifact is this vase from my great-great-grandparents. This vase is from the night of Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht is when the Nazis broke into many people's homes and destroyed all the crystal in their homes. They destroyed all the crystal in my great-great-grandparents' home and business. This piece of glass is the only piece that was not destroyed. This is very special to me and my family. Hi, my name is Lucy. I chose to use my great-grandpa Harry's Talit for my artifact. He got it on a trip to Israel about 49 years ago. It when he passed away, it was given to my Uncle Cory at his bar mitzvah. He has used it ever since. He has also lent it to my Uncle Jeremy for his bar mitzvah. He spilled wine on it and got a stain. The stain is right along there. It has also been used under the chuppah for my parents and many of my aunt and uncle's weddings throughout the family. This, is, this tali is significant to Jewish heritage because it, is, it was bought in Israel and it has been used at many Jewish celebrations. Those include weddings and bar and bat mitzvahs. I've heard many stories about my, my great grandpa Harry and I wish I could have met him but I hope I can continue the tradition of this Talit. Hi, my name is Josiah Ariel and this is a Haggadah. My great, great grandfather loved Passover. So when he passed away, his kids made this in honor of him. On the second night of Passover, they brought this to Temple of Aaron and a lot, lot, lot of people used it. Now, my family hosts Passover at our house using this very Haggadah. Now, let me open it up so all of you guys can see this little thing right here, baby. In memory of Jack Kaplan, who loved the Seder, donated by his children. One of them was named Joseph, who I am named after. Um, this Haggadah is very special to us. It's because it's been in our family for 40 years and it's the only Haggadah my mom has ever used. Thank you for being with me and learning about this special Haggadah. Hi, I'm Ruby and this is a Star of David necklace. And um, it's a necklace that my mom got for her bat mitzvah 30 years ago, and she got it from a friend of my great uncle's. The story is that my great uncle, Jeff Levinson, who passed away 40 years ago, had given a Star of David to his friend when they were young men, and he gave him the Star of David and told him to keep the Sabbath holy. He didn't really mean specifically to keep Shabbat holy. He didn't... He really meant um, to remember where your family came from and it was a special moment between them. When my uncle died, his best friend started a tradition of having replicas of the necklace made and passed on to them to the future generation so it would be a memory of my uncle and to remind us all where we came from. There are several of these necklaces in our family that belong to kids of my mom's generation and they will be passed on to future generations. Hi, I'm Gil, and I have a lot to tell you about this tefillin. This is tefillin, and it is used by observant Jewish adults during weekly morning prayer service. There are also some sections of the Torah inside the tefillin, like you can see right here. It is from 1950. That's like nine, That's like 71 years old. My great-grandfather got it from my grandfather in America. 
My great-grandfather gave this tefillin to my grandpa Art when he became a Jewish adult or a bar mitzvah in 1950 when he was living in New York. My great-grandfather thought it was important to keep the tradition going because most of his family was killed in the Holocaust. Although my grandfather stopped using the tefillin when he started college, it remains an important part of our Jewish tradition. Well, I just told you a lot about to fill in, so hopefully you will pass this story on to other people. Thanks, me. Nah.